Please do not harass or attempt to intimidate any of the people mentioned in this video. Ponder Sprocket commentaries are intended as critiques of situations or behaviors based on the information available. They are meant to showcase previously unexplored perspectives, demonstrate wrongdoings, point out contradictions and misinformation, or dispel false narratives so that others may come to an informed opinion. Under no circumstances is targeted harassment appropriate or encouraged. As an additional note, while this video discusses legalities, please remember that we are not lawyers, and thus this video is an exploration of a situation based on what we personally understand or were able to find out. Don't take it as solid legal advice. Mm, oh, that was good. Finally got that done with. On to the next. <laughs> Fuck, what happened to the lights? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? STAY BACK IF YOU KNOW WHAT'S GOOD FOR YOU! I HAVE TENTACLES! Uh, Fonder! What the frick?! For all that is wicked and sullied in the world, don't scare me like that, Stone! <laughs> I just wanted to help you put a close on the situation. And you have to do that by giving me a heart attack? Uh, <laughs> trust me. That's the least scary I can get. But... The evidence I have will scare you even more. Oh, bringing a call back to spooky month, are we? What are we, like, more than halfway through the new year? I can Mimi dig it. So, do you care to join me? What if I say no? This scar can be used for much more than intimidation. Oh, honey, you know exactly how my content works. Welcome back, my cutie pies, to a final comprehensive look on the Madame situation and the various facets contained within. I imagine some of you are probably thinking, Madame, is she still relevant? And that's fine, that's fine, maybe this video just isn't for you. Stone and I, on the other hand, thought it would be interesting to look at the full scope of the entire situation to go over a couple facets that people may not have taken into consideration, and to discuss the theoretical legal ramifications as best as we currently understand them. Not necessarily because we believe that they'll actually come about, but because, and considering this was also Ash's reasoning, surely she'll love this, knowing what sort of legal rights an artist has to protect themselves in instances like this could help smaller creators. So, uh, thanks for that, Ash. You may not have been able to do it with the Onisi on suit, but you still managed to pull it off. Top-notch 3000 point IQ teaching method right there. If that sounds like your cup of tea then, hey, you're in luck. This is going to be a four-parter. For those who are unaware, we will give a brief summary on the situation. This is a case of stolen art and lies. This is Madame, now known as Princess Ash. And despite many people knowing her as Madame, we're going to be referring to her as Ash. Why? Because it makes it easier for those new to the situation. But, incidentally, potentially more confusing to my audience since I've already done a video about an Ashley and I will be doing another one regarding another Ash. Right after this one. Oh well, you guys don't mind, right? Princess Ash asked a fan named Slimmers to make stills for her, and Slimmers agreed on the basis of her getting credit, but the terms weren't exactly rock solid. Fast forward to when Ash has the final stills and is now, according to her, working on the video in which she will be giving Slimmers the agreed upon shoutout. Ash used some of Slimmers' art in her 50,000 subscriber video, but the credit for that art wasn't given as Slimmers had expected it to be. A quick note on that, Nezzy Monster and I realized that the artwork used in that first thumbnail was actually Slimmers' fan art, and not one of the commission stills Ash had ordered from them. Obviously, since the fan art she used wasn't the commission, that was either a lie, or it was Madame losing track on which video assets she actually paid for. So Slimmers made a small mistake and commented on Ash's video for her artwork. And during that time, she vented on a private Instagram account for venting, where only a very few select people could see anything she posted. A small mistake, we can all agree we've made. Ash messaged Slimmers on Discord shortly after, asking why she left a comment instead of just messaging her. The two of them seem to sort the issue out in DMs, although people have pointed out that Ash's side of the conversation appears to be gaslighting, but then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. One of Slimmers' friends commented on Ash's 50,000 subscriber video, the one using fan art and not the commission cells, also asking for credit to be given, and this is where Ash's good favor ran out. Ash immediately attempted to cut ties with Slimmers, but later also wanted to continue using the artwork she had commissioned, now firmly making note that she was not going to credit Slimmers and therein not going through with her side of the commission agreement. Slimmers decided to contact Ash through Instagram to try to settle things on good terms and continue to work together. Ash, however, was unwilling to compromise. And within one day, Ash decided to dock Slimmers by releasing a phone number Slimmers had given to her from a phone calling app, because Slimmers did not have a phone number at the time. 
The art community heard about the situation, and Ash has since fallen under further scrutiny as a pattern of behavior of her attempting to silence minors with threats was brought to light, as well as the potential that she might have lied about a legal situation she had previously spoken of on her channel, which happened to be one of the catalysts behind her channel's boost, bringing her to people's attention in the first place. It is those legal ramifications of the situation that we will be talking about today, as well as further expanding on the secondary situation with the stolen art. We will also be covering the response and interview part of the two hour long video Ash made, which was copyright striked by Slimmers because Ash used the unpaid for stills. So everyone caught up? Good, because there are so many more layers to the situation we have yet to touch on. From here on, we'll discuss the possibilities of a legal battle between Ash and Slimmers. Again, we don't expect this to happen, we're just doing this for smaller creators to learn from. <laughs> Firstly, let's lift off the offenses that Slimmers could hold against Ash. We have attempted targeted harassment. That's when a single individual attempts to harass a specific person or organization. Attempted criminal direction of harassment. That's when an individual tries to get other people to harass a specific person or organization. Then there's the attempted infliction of emotional distress. This is because Ash would have known that purposely removing credit and continuing to use the unpaid for stills would have inflicted emotional distress to Slimmers. The as currently perceived gaslighting in Ash's messages to Slimmers could also be counted in this regard as well as the potential harassment. Then there's the plagiarism or copyright infringement. This refers to the misappropriation and use of copyrighted imagery without the legal rights to do so. Thanks, Akumu. And lastly, there is attempting the release of minors' information online. So, attempting to dox. And for all the questions we imagine you all have, we will get to those in a minute. Now, we should make note that Slimmers and Ash both have one another's phone numbers. Ash was the only one who actively, within an online platform, attempted to release that number with the intention of directing harassment towards Slimmers directly. Slimmers has done no such thing in retaliation. There is no guarantee that Slimmers would go ahead with legal proceedings against Ash, and we can't really expect that of a 15-year-old in the first place. Aside from the removal of her video, which Slimmers did recently through the means of a copyright strike, but we're only going to be looking at the potential consequences that Ash could face, not necessarily the ones that she will face. Firstly, the harassment. A lot of online crimes involve criminal behavior that crosses state lines, which turns them into federal issues. Ash specified that Slimmers lives in Missouri, and we've heard from Ash herself that she lives in Florida. Equally, the people Ash has been attempting to direct towards Slimmers in a harassment campaign likely live all over the country and potentially outside of it. Federal laws actually classify harassment and stalking together. CriminalDefenseLawyer.com stipulates that stalking can be punished with up to a possible prison sentence of up to five years, and a fine of under $250,000, or potentially both, obviously depending on the severity and the judge presiding over the case. In terms of the intentional infliction of emotional distress, there's a little less of a potential case to go with. Usually unless there is some sort of recommendation from a psychiatrist for the situation to be taken more seriously, there may not be enough of a case for this single offense to stand on its own ground. Intentional infliction of emotional stress is often cooped together with more serious claims. Because of that, it could be up in the air as to whether this particular complaint would go through. On the one hand, there are other offenses to consider alongside it, but... On the other hand, the intentional affliction was a potentially singular incident. And it could be reasonably argued that with that release of the phone number, the intention was for that singular incident to ripple outwards and cause additional distress. It's difficult to say for sure without getting lawyers involved. However, if there happened to be a case where someone publicly made note that they were harassing Slimmers as a result of the situation with Princess Ash, or it could be argued that they were harassing Slimmers on behalf of Princess Ash, the case could be a tad stronger. Thanks, Akumu. The last thing is doxing, which... I mean, it should, should kind of go without saying. But I'll say it anyway. It's fucking illegal. Yeah, it doesn't really matter where you are. Doxing is illegal all across the board. Now, some of you might be wondering, oh, but Ash didn't actually dox Slimmers. She only tried to. Doesn't matter, honeys. That's a problem, too. Attempting to dox can get a person into trouble just like succeeding in a dox can. There's a less harsh sentence given as a punishment for it, but the action demonstrates criminal intent and it could still be considered harassment, intimidation, invasion of privacy, or even assault in extreme cases. Doxing can be legally fine in certain situations, provided the information was already publicly available, but the phone number that Ash thought to be Slimmers' personal phone number would not be considered already public information. Attempting to dox a person's personal phone number, particularly with the intent of harassment, as this would likely be considered, could be counted as either a misdemeanor or a felony charge. A misdemeanor could be punishable for up for a year in prison, and a felony charge could be up to three years in state prison. We already know the likelihood of it being Ash's intention to harass Slimmers, as she made a direct 
direct implication of her want for people to do just that within the Instagram stories where she provided the attempted docs information. She tried to be coy about it by saying that she was just giving the number out for people to do with as they please, but a lawyer might argue that it's completely within the realm of possibility that people would read into that wording and easily recognize the intentions behind the post. She implied that Slimmers as a person had wronged her and deliberately fabricated a story to act against Ash, thus setting Slimmers up as the villain and wrongdoer. That alongside with the fact that it would have been Ash's personal following that would have seen and acted upon the information provided in the post. She also specifies that Slimmers is a harasser when she gives out the number. If fans were to see the opportunity to give a harasser a taste of their own medicine, it would not be a leap of judgment to think that they would, in turn, attempt to harass Slimmers. Actually, the fact that one of Ash's later Instagram stories showcased that someone did attempt to use the number, they related to her that the number no longer works, means that it's completely possible that this is exactly what happened. I think that covers the extent of the known criminal acts with regards to Slimmers, right? From our own understanding, yes. Too bad we're not done! Oh, far from it. Slimmers isn't the only one who held precedent for legal proceedings against Princess Ash. <laughs> Say that ten times fast. You- I have a speech impediment and you know it. Once I learned about this other situation, I became slightly agitated because it shows that Princess Ash did not learn anything from the Slimmer situation. There have been so many instances of Princess Ash scamming artists. I really think that artists should only show you the sketch and not give them anything more until they get paid and make sure to put a big ass watermark on it. Fuck that. Any artist who works with her after this point knowing all of this and gets scammed had it coming, you dumb tit. Ah yes, the duality of tits. Guys, please, I don't actually think you deserve it. Just stop being dumb for like five minutes. So many of you might be confused to what we're talking about. And don't worry, that's not going to change anytime soon. You see, Summers wasn't the only artist that Ash has scammed, attempted to rip off, or spread personal contact information of. Luckily, the other artists Ash had wronged did not have all of these things done to them. Only one each. Like when you can only take one candy from the candy ball. Take more than one and you're a monster probably why the Slimmers thing blew up. Ash used friendship as a veil to get free art from all of these artists, and in some cases, the art wasn't even free. But Ash, as should come to no surprise from anyone, never paid a thing. The artists we're talking about are known as Kells and Mocha Fua. Some of you may be aware of the name of Lumi Starbun, and while that name will pop up with regards to any potential legal proceedings, it's not because of any slight on Ash's end. I'd wager there are more, but these are the ones we're aware of. The next artist is Kells, who unfortunately we were not able to get in contact with, but we were able to get in contact with Wang, the guy who actually ended up paying the artist. See, Kells was commissioned by Ash to the tune of $80, but when it came to paying that amount, Ash proved herself to be unreliable. The excuse for this changed from it being a bank issue on the 10th of December to it being a PayPal issue on the 28th of December. Between then, on the 15th of December, she made the claim that her PayPal would be getting unlocked that day and that she would be paying both the artist Kells and the video editor Chiefty, whom she ended up having a different issue with. We can't be sure of what happened between then and the 28th, which is when Wang came forward and offered to pay the artist on Ash's behalf. It should also be noted while Kells was paid $80 from Wang, Wang actually paid $127 because of the currency conversion. Mocha Fua was an artist who'd actually worked with Ash before the Slimmers situation, but after Slimmers and Ash had their falling out, it was Mocha Fua's turn to be screwed over by Ash. After all of the videos that have been done on Ash regarding the situation with Slimmers, many people came to myself and other creators behind these videos and pointed out that Ash made another video, now on a different artist, effectively claiming that this artist was lying about her as well. Guess how true that one is! Pondu was already reaching out to the artist when the video came out, which was a good call on her part. Ash used this video to push the idea that all artists are liars and scammers. <laughs> The irony. Ash actually made my job super easy. Wanna know why? Because Ash revealed, yet again, a direct means for people to contact the artist in her video. Despite censoring Mokafua's name, Ash neglected to censor their business and commission email. And I can prove that this was a direct means of contacting Mokafua because it's how I contacted her and told her about the video existing. Are you aware that Ash just revealed your email in a public video where she claimed that you lied about her and tried to get artwork that she paid for removed from her merch store? Huh? What the hell? Wow, that's awful. I'm really not exactly sure what to do here. She did pay for one merch design, but I wasn't even gonna bother to try to get it back from her. It's not even in her name either. It's in Fan Fiber's possession now. She's going off some BS because that's literally what she told me, that the merch art would be in Fan Fiber's possession. Wait, paid for one merch design? Are you saying that there's potentially a second merch design that she was using without paying for? Is that the one you made note of her using without paying? Here's the video. Would you mind filling me in on your side of the story? I'm watching the video at the moment. I'm absolutely 
furious at her words. So yes, there is at least one design that wasn't paid for that is being used. I could try getting that piece in a moment. She did ask me if she could use it in her merch, but never actually paid me for it. So my side of the story is a bit short, but simple. I had an interest in Ash's content because of her views on how sexism was in the gaming community and how certain women would exploit their gender for attention and money. I joined her Discord server and made a gift art. She enjoyed the art that I had made her and asked if I did commissions. I replied saying I do and that I was willing to do merch art for her. She only paid for one piece to be used as merchandise. By the way, her profile picture is my art. She said she'd credit me and I told her that's fine. Since the Slimmer's drama, my credit had been removed with no warning. Since then, I decided not to associate with her. The only action I did afterwards was try to get her to stop using my art as an icon. I never actually intended to act on getting the merch art back. So she's flat out lying about it being an issue with the merch? It was only the icon you wanted her to stop using? Mm-hmm. She's lying about that. I even got someone to do a takedown on her icon and discuss with them that I don't believe I have the rights to take down the merch art because I was well aware I couldn't. I don't know who emailed her agent, but it surely was not me. Pukafua then went on a Twitter thread discussing the situation and showcasing her evidence that she had. In fact, not being able to take down Ash's merch art, just that she wanted the icon, which was her art, to be removed from Ash's channel. Oh yeah, and by the way, Mokafua, is 14 years old, so Ash has yet again revealed a direct means of contacting an artist that she has publicly declared is attempting to fuck her over and who is underage. This is a pattern. For those who didn't know, I am the person who did Ash's YouTube icon and merchandise. After all the Slimmer's drama happened, I chose not to associate with her anymore. As an artist who takes commissions, it upset me how she treated Slimmer's. Now, Ash is attempting to slander me for allegedly emailing a fan fiber agent saying I wanted the rights back to the art, which never fucking happened. I was well aware I don't own those images anymore, but neither does she. Fanfiber does. She told me herself. Evidence here. Okay, great! I forwarded the sisterhood design to my agent. Under contract, any design I send him, he has legal rights to now. Well, Fanfiber owns it, but they are happy to credit you if you wanted. But obviously that's no form of payment, so I'd rather just PayPal you. Anyways, I looked at your prices, I'll double check later what matches the cute sisterhood design and will PayPal you once my agent implements your design into the shop. Additionally, when I announce the new design, I will credit and plug your social media. Please note that this is not a form of payment, I just want you to get more recognition. Does this sound alright to you or is there anything on your mind? And what's your email to your PayPal? I will PayPal you when the merch goes live. This is actually another instance showcasing Ash's lack of knowledge as to how artistic copyright works. Right here, Ash is making the claim that she forwarded the image to her merch agent, which automatically grants them rights over the piece. But at this point, Ash hadn't paid Mokafua for the design and therein didn't own it. At this point, Ash didn't have the rights to transfer ownership of that piece, but still sent it out as though she did. Suddenly, her not understanding that the work she didn't pay Slimmers for still belongs to Slimmers is making a lot more sense now. After Mokofua explained that she didn't originally have a problem with Ash until the Slimmers thing came up, she further explains that it was only the icon she wanted removed and not the merch, which is what Ash publicly claimed in her video. The credit thing is, I'd assume, mostly on the behalf of the fan fiber, and I am really unsure how that could be managed. Hmm, that seems fairly complicated, because now there are agents involved and she's doing it through fan fiber not some DIY merch website. I don't think a DMCA notification on that would be valid. However, I'm fine with going through on the YouTube profile picture. Like, I believe the only thing I would take down would be the PFP art. Yeah, and like as I said with other people, I wouldn't know if I'd be able to get back one of the designs considering she's actually paid for it. I'll say this, she's done it in a really sneaky way, lol. So it belongs to her and she gave the rights to fan fiber after. She's blatantly said she'd pay you and credit you but sort of said crediting is not a form of pain. Yeah, again, this is like my first time I've worked with someone like this, so it's iffy. Mm. But she did say that she'd credit you for the YouTube icon, yes? Yeah, it's in her Discord server, if that's even still up. She has a tendency to delete servers. This falls back onto the pattern some people have recognized where Ash is bullying minors into either silence or into doing what she wants. She intends to send people after Slimmers with the number and then made a 3000 IQ video. Now she's made a video claiming that Mokafua is trying to affect her livelihood and has leaked this personal business email in a public video alongside that claim. I mean, I don't know how she keeps managing to pull this kind of shit off. Now we won't deny there's the possibility that Ash was maybe just given some bad information. Actually, it's potentially very likely, as well as forgetting to censor Mokafua 
Lua's email being a mistake and not deliberately done out of malice, as was done with Slimmer's. Maybe someone at Fanfiber was emailed about this and they told her that someone was trying to get the merch removed. Except Ash actually provided evidence in the video to showcase that she had the rights to use the merch designs that were allegedly being removed. So why would she not check to see if this claim was actually true before making a public video about it? Since we're discussing the potential legal proceedings, this actually hurts Ash. Not only did she publicly reveal this 14-year-old artist's business email, it was also paired with the claim that this artist was scamming her, similar to the concept what she did to Slimmers. And while Ash may not have revealed the direct contact number on purpose, she still revealed her email, which opens the floodgates for potential harassment. That paired with the fact that Ash is making this public claim about the artist trying to scam her, which Mokafua could prove to not be true, that means that Ash is defaming Mokafua. She's making a false public statement in a video that would affect Mokafua's reputation, and then pairing that with the leaked business email, this action has the potential to affect Mokafua's livelihood and is, again, directed towards a minor. Given the title of the video was The Art Community Has a Lying Problem, all this points to is that it seems like Ash is trying to push the narrative that the artists are spreading around the poor things that she's done and that they are all lying. But why would she want to make this claim? Maybe because it's not just her scamming artist that these art YouTubers are starting to point out and dig into. And finally we have Lumi Starbun who, yeah, probably can't sue Ash, but Ash could potentially sue her. We won't go into a whole lot of detail with this, but the artist Lumi Starbun, who did work for Ash for a temporary period of time, has allegedly been trying to, uh, well, what has she been trying to do? Bandwagon, I guess? Play the victim? Play the victim is more accurate. She tried to make a claim that she was one of the artists that Ash has scammed. Originally, she made a video explaining why she was still going to support Ash, only then to be followed up by a video where she claimed Ash has scammed her. I actually got into contact with Lumia a while back, asking if she could supply us with the screenshots of her being scammed by Ash. Yeah, guess who magically just happened to not have those specific parts of the transactions? There have been a lot more things going on with Lumi since then, so much that we're not going to get into it here. It's basically its own drama now, so if you're interested, just look up her name, and you'll find a plethora of material to listen to. Onision attracted Ash, and now Ash has attracted Lumi Starbun. None of us should be surprised that people with a lying problem who start drama as a result have a habit of attracting other people with lying problems who create more drama as a result. It's like they see someone getting called out for lies and think, oh, I can make myself look better by comparison. <laughs> Time to talk about chopped onions. I can feel myself tearing up already. Here, you can dry your eyes on my scarf. <laughs> So, Onision. God, what can people say about Onision? For full context of the situation, Ash claimed on her YouTube channel that she was planning on suing Onision, and this is also what she was best known for. The reason for this is because Ash originally made two videos reviewing Onision's music videos. These videos were allegedly struck down because of a copyright violation. Ash also stipulated that these were manual strikes, which means a living person had to have been behind them. Most likely, Onision or Greg as he is otherwise known, which holds up with what people are aware Onision does should anyone make a negative video about him. Ash really pushed that she was going to sue him for wrongfully terminating her videos, which is admittedly a noble cause. Onision has effectively been socially agreed upon as one of the most controversial YouTubers, and despite his large audience base, he has just as many if not more people who actively dislike either his content or him as a person, for various reasons that differ depending on who you ask. It's even to the point that if a new drama cow appears in the YouTube community, they are generally referred to as a variation of Onision, such as JStation being referred to as the Canadian Onision. Yeah, JStation. That guy Ash was going to interview and promote swimmers next to. Whoops. We won't get to them here, but basically there's a lot of reasons to not like Onision, and obviously this was announced before Onision tried to sue Repsion and Chris Hansen. So people were all too happy when they heard that Ash would finally be the person to take him on in court. I, for one, was one of those people. I even shouted her out in one of my videos. She marked her Patreon and said that she was opening up special tiers to donate and to help her acquire funds to fly across the country and sue Greg. I also gave money to this cause, and Ash states that one person nearly funded the whole trip on their own. Yo, can we get an F in the chat for that person? I'll give them the whole damn fucking alphabet. 
However, in light of her current actions, many people have speculated whether or not there was ever a plan to sue Omnision in the first place. Ash has, during the course of the Slimmer situation, proved herself to be an unreliable witness. She has been caught in lies multiple times, and despite there being evidence to prove them as lies, she tends to double down. Which brings up the question as to whether or not it can be believed that she's actually suing Onision, or at least was planning to. On top of her potential unreliable nature, there have also been events broadcasted on her Instagram story that further calls her claims into question. What called her claims into question even further is her deleting all of her Onision videos. Yeah. That happened. Back on November 11th, you can tell because of the giant view dip on her social blade. She deleted all of the videos referencing the Onision lawsuit from her channel. Too bad for her, I have them all downloaded. I downloaded them all the day before, lucky me. Now, at this time, Ash was supposed to be in Washington getting ready to sue Onision. According to her, most of the funds that were gathered were for the sake of travel expenses, as she would need to travel from Florida to Washington. But then the concert happened. Ah, I guess the concert. The Fire Nation attacks twice. Ash posted on her Instagram story that she was attending a Breaking Benjamin concert and a Three Days Grace concert while she was in Washington. Now, we should specify that tickets for this concert could have been potentially quite inexpensive depending on where she sat. Some tickets could be as cheap as $15. But people online thought this was her wasting money, and I will actually defend Ash on this point. People can live outside of the one thing that they are doing or well known for, but the way she presented herself with her actions before flying out, people thought she was using the money for a free trip to go see music shows. Now, if she actually used the money to travel to Washington for the purpose of the lawsuit, and she just so happened to be enjoying herself while she was there, or on her own dime, or on the dime of a friend, that would be perfectly fine, and she is perfectly within her right to enjoy herself, especially considering a lawsuit can be a tiring and stressful experience. Sometimes, a little reprieve can might be necessary, and no one should falter for needing that. We run into problems because Ash had not been entirely transparent on exactly how much money was raised or where the funds would be going exactly. Furthermore, despite her needing to raise funds for the trip, she made a note on her Instagram that she would be extending her trip, which calls into question the exact nature of the funds. If the money had been crowdfunded for a specific purpose and with specific needs taken into consideration, Ash shouldn't have had the money to be able to extend the trip, especially if you consider that a flight back is usually booked before leaving and you shouldn't exactly be able to eat usually change that. There's usually a fine for that and you would have to buy another ticket home. This implies that Ash had money of her own to spend on the trip, which, depending on how much money that was, begs the question as to why she needed money raised for the travel expenses of the lawsuit in the first place. Ash has also effectively said that because people think she's lying, she's not going to be forthcoming about the nature behind the funds, which, let's be real, that's suspicious as all heck. It makes Voldemort look like he was an angel sent by the gods. If people didn't have a reason to call her claims into question before, they certainly did now. She did claim that she had been abandoned and she was going homeless before she flew out, but we'll address that in a bit. If Ash was going to sue Greg, what could she sue him for? Obviously, she could sue him for the false copyright claim against her videos and the lost money that would have been made from them. The amount she was suing for would have been around $2,500. Now, you might think that if Ash won, she'd be able to use the money that she won from Onision to buy her plane ticket back home. The issue with that is that the court system itself has issues. Onision would not be compelled to pay her right there and then. The money could even have to be taken from him by sending collectors if he was unwilling to pay. So there would be no guarantee Ash would be leaving Washington with that money in tow. And with Greg's known history of paying people for legal shenanigans, he most likely would bite back in some regard. Yeah, the guy threatened to kill himself because his ex-wife was getting alimony for from him and he said it was her stealing from him. He compared it to slavery. The guy's not exactly fond of being forced to pay money to people. The allegations surrounding him committing tax fraud should be pretty evident of that already. Now this would all be pure speculation outside of actually hearing from Ash or checking into Washington's court system to see if anyone had filed a case against someone under one of Onision's potential known aliases or names. Guess what I did. <laughs> I was originally going to do this collab with someone else. No offense, Ponder. I am Shooketh! Hello, Shooketh. I'm Stone. But I decided to find evidence that would stand on my own so that my video would stand out. I decided to look through the court records under all of Onision's legal names, and there were a lot. I removed any with middle names that weren't Greg's, kept in mind his last thing with the wetlands to make sure I didn't get any false positives. We also searched various potential aliases or changed names that he might have had. While a lot of names did come up, they were from a variety of different dates, so it was just a matter of finding any court date within the time frame that Ash either could have filed a case against Onision, or for when she claimed to have filed a case against Onision. 
Onision. For October, any date that had Greg's name were in the most recent in August. There was one recent case filed for October 7th, which would have actually been very close to the date Ash described in her Apology for Everything video, which we are going to be looking at later. Spoilers, it's not an apology. After we double checked the names again, I called the Washington Court District to check on the one case filed for Gregory Montez Jackson for October 7th, only to find out that it wasn't even a small claims case, it was a stupid freaking parking ticket. It had to have been after June 21st when Ash initially claimed to have filed a case against Onision, but we can't find any records of this suit despite her saying she had been working on it for three months at the time that this video was originally scripted. She said that she was preparing the papers August 27th, 2019, and her non-apology video was her claiming that she had a friend record her walking into the courthouse, but if that were true, and the case had already been filed, basically anyone with internet access could check and see if it was true. Since then, we have not been able to find any evidence on Ash's side proving that she is suing Onision, because the court cases cannot be private. They need to be reported and logged. Allegedly, she claims she needs to fly to Washington to file the paperwork, but early in one of her Onision videos, she said that she could mail in her paperwork. I don't know how to fucking articulate this. I'm so sorry. But basically, for most counties and states, you would have to just, like, mail them paper, which is, like, the old-fashioned way. But in his county, you can just do it online, which is really cool and it's really easy. Um, but unfortunately, my roommate had already printed out paperwork for me, so I just filled it out and sent it to them instead. <laughs> because why not? I didn't want to waste a tree, okay? So now we have two different claims made at different times by Ash herself regarding when the paperwork was being filed, even how it was being filed. There was even a potentially later date she could have filed these papers on, and we We'll go into that towards the end of the whole thing. Her time frames and her positioning when it comes to the alleged court case is very confusing and it doesn't make sense when put into the perspective of a crowdfunded lawsuit. The money for the suit was raised, according to Ash, as a means of living expenses for her being in Washington. It was primarily travel money. However, Ash is now back home, which seems weird if the lawsuit had actually been filed, because that suit will require her to be in Washington for the court dates. We also should bring up how we were confused on why Ash extended her trip when all of this started, because we knew that it would eat more into the travel expenses. Additionally, if the money had been crowdfunded, then the funds she has available for this case are limited. Personally, not going home instead of just doing it in the time frame she originally was planning to would just be eating more into the money without using it for its intended purpose. Now, granted, if something came up and there was a certain amount within the crowdfunded money to use for instances where something went wrong, that would be one thing. But Ash actively changing plans and changing up her travel arrangements and during the time of the trip would eat into the funds that potentially didn't exist to solve those issues. Which begs the question of what the funds were specifically being used for. If Ash had enough of her own money to get herself high, drunk, and go to a concert, that begs the further question as to why she was crowdfunding money for travel expenses when she clearly had the money to spend on herself. Why would she not just forgo the concert and frivolities to pay for the trip herself, assuming she paid for these things? There's been mention that the concert may have been a gift. So outside of Ash's, like, bank statements for that period, we can't really be sure how much money she spent on herself. Ash has also been claiming behind the scenes that she makes a lot of money, which, again, begs the question as to why she would have needed to crowdfund for the trip in the first place. Now, granted, this is all speculation and purely what we were able to find on our own. It's not like we have a direct statement from one of the participants in the lawsuit. Oh, ponder, ponder, ponder. You think I came to this collab empty-handed? <gasps> Evidence? Statements to call claims into question? Das hot! Ah, das hot! Hot is right. I can burn with both lightning and ice. I actually did what a lot of people wouldn't. I directly emailed Onision. Myself. He refused an interview, but I did get his words stating that Ash has not sent any paperwork to him of the sort. Gonna be real, if you had gotten an interview with him, I probably wouldn't have done this collab. While it could potentially be argued that Onision's word can't really be trusted and that he has proven himself to have a very long track record of lying so as to avoid making himself look in the wrong, at this point, Ash has a similar pattern of behavior. So if we can't trust Onision on his word with no evidence given, can we really trust Ash? Now that's hot right there. I might burn myself on this tea. Careful then, we're only a quarter way through and it's hard to talk with a burned tongue. On top of that, Onision himself had issued a protection order, the legal court proceeding for which took place on January 24th between himself, the YouTuber Repsion, and the investigative journalist Chris Hansen. Which would have never worked in the first place, let's be honest. As well as he followed to the wrong Chris Hansen. 
The important point here is that the community was very aware of this lawsuit happening, not just because it was against Repsion, who's well known in the community for actively criticizing Onision's actions, and Hansen, who was actively investigating Onision and claims made against him at the time, but also because, in general, there's a spotlight on Onision right now and people are hyper-focusing on various facets surrounding him. If Ash had followed a suit against Onision, there's no way that the community wouldn't know about it. Even if Onision didn't talk about it himself, he's under so much scrutiny right now that someone would have found the court record. Even Repsion himself went looking to see if Ash was telling the truth. And of course, he found just as little as we did. And now Ash has removed the Onision videos, abandoned her original Patreon, and seems to be making no mention of the suit in the hopes that people will just forget that she ever tried that. Which again, F in the chat for anyone who paid for that legal fund. Tune in for part two over on Stone's channel, where we'll be going into a commentary on Ash's apology but really non-apology video. Click on the link in the description for that. Meet you in the darkness. Guess we know now whether or not Stone has his fun with the lights on or off. Ponder! And of course, before we vanish into a puff of darkness, we'll need a little light to check out these awesome fan art pieces some cutie pies have made. First up, we have Raise the Balance by Drinks, with some squishy cute tentacles to love and snuggle, and a happy looking little octo buddy. I also find the little octopus icons in either corner to be absolutely adorable. Swinging into Savia, it's Not All Heroes Wear Capes, Some Have an Octopus on Their Butt by At Art Aulin, perfectly accentuating some real ponder strength, as well as some paired tentacle strengths to match. A perfect combo. Looking ready to go, it's Pondering Sprockets by Foxy Moron Garden. Really putting a lot of fun expression into both characters' faces and wonderfully contrasting the blue and purple with some lovely dynamic yellow and orange. Very cool. As a return to cuteness, we have A Teeny Ponder by Leech Juice, giving us some sweet, comfy, huggy snuggles. I also like that Fiend's tentacles are basically everywhere. Very fitting considering how many he has. Bubbling up from below, it's Ponder Sprocket by The Starry Lamb, featuring some chibi goodness with a beautiful undersea background to accompany it. I love all the curves and the chubby look of everything, as well as the extra added detail to Fiend's eye. Very nice. For additional squishy chubby fun, we have Octo Mom by Moths. Can I just say that I absolutely love the style Ponder Sprocket was drawn in here? It looks so clean and soft and really gives off the vibe that she's huggable and fun. And that little heart in Fiend's eye is just such a cute accent. Because snuggles are a trend, here's Warm Up by Hot Pink 3. Aw, these buddies look so heckin' cute! I also love that it looks like Fiend is ruffling Ponder Sprocket's hair. It's got a nice, ya did good kid vibe to it. Swooping across the city, it's Ponder Sprocket to the Rescue, fan art gift by C. Lestiel. Nice name. Pretty nicely demonstrating how Ponder Sprocket and Fiend actually cooperate to move around. I love surprise canon accurate pieces, and the posing here is just lovely, paired with that lovely sky. Ooh. Ready to shine, here's Octomama by Cal Cole, and I hope I said that right, with some, can I just say, super nicely done lighting. The way Ponder Sprocket's hair is drawn here is so cool, and it gives me this awesome intense anime vibe. The giant titties probably also help with that. Next is Original Character Don't Steal by At Thorn Illustrate, who I guess wanted me to be left completely speechless by the hilarity of this piece and those expressions. Congratulations, Thorn. You did it. I don't know why, but I look at this and my brain just goes, swoop, there it is. Pointing out the issue, we have Ponder Sprocket Octomama Above All Octomamas by Tanky the Great with an absolutely awesome sketch and digital painting paired design. I love how the piece draws your focus to the arm and face, and then the sketch lines sort of accent the rest of the form. It's very nice. And finally, we'll end off with some innuendo in The Officer That Went Deep by my good friend Weird. You can tell because there's a little weird ball down in the corner. We got some lovely high angle perspective, clearly he knows me too well, paired with a serious face and some tentacles that look like they're about to do some grabbing. Better start running. If you like any of these pieces, please don't hesitate to show the artist some love through the links provided in the description. You can also check out B, my artist's work, if you're so inclined, DeviantArt, Twitter, Patreon, you know the drill. Thanks for taking this plunge with me, my cuties. See you in the next video. Octomama, out.